On the eve of the D-Day landings in 1944, there was over a thousand war correspondents reporting on the events of the conflict as it all unfolded. A handful of these journalists and photographers were women, and per the directives of the governments, women were prohibited from going to the front lines. So while these correspondents could cover stories from the war zone, they were not allowed to go in with the troops. Understandably, many female war correspondents were not happy with the ban. It is necessary that I report on this war, wrote a journalist named Martha Gellhorn in an angry letter to military authorities. I do not feel there is any need to beg as a favour for the right to serve as the eyes for millions of people in America who are desperately in need of seeing but cannot see for themselves. This message was true to form for Gellhorn as a long-time, well-travelled reporter. She began her career during the Great Depression, working as a field investigator for the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, reporting on the impact of the Depression on the country. In 1936, she met Ernest Hemingway, whom she later married, and together they travelled to Spain to cover the Spanish Civil War in 1937. With D-Day looming, Gellhorn didn't let the government ban on embedded female reporters hold her back. On the night of June 6, 1944, before the ships departed for Normandy, she made her way to the harbour on the pretext of interviewing nurses aboard a hospital ship. Once she got on board, though, she hid herself in a bathroom. She remained in her hideout for several hours and only emerged when the ship was well on its way to France. After the troops had landed and the massacre on the beach was finally over, Gellhorn sneaked ashore with some doctors and medics and posed as a stretcher bearer collecting the wounded. She was the only woman to land in Normandy the same day as the troops did. Other women followed, of course, but that wasn't until 38 days later when members of the United States Women's Army Corps landed on the beaches. But that's not where the story of Gellhorn's work during World War II ended. Soon after Gellhorn had filed her story about the events at Normandy, the military police arrested her and held her at a nurse's training camp. She escaped from there, accompanied the 82nd Airborne Division across Europe to Berlin, and saw the Dachau concentration camp shortly after it was liberated. She covered the Nuremberg trials, and the Atlantic Monthly sent her to report on the trial of Nazi war criminal Adolf Eichmann. As Gellhorn said, I followed the war wherever I could reach it. After the war, she continued covering conflicts her country was involved in. She covered the Vietnam War and the Arab-Israel conflicts in the 1960s and 70s. She reported on the civil wars in Central America at the age of 70. And in 1989, at the age of 81, reported on the ground on the US invasion of Panama. When civil war erupted in Bosnia in the early 1990s, Gellhorn finally accepted she was too old to go. A few years later, at 89 years of age, blind and suffering from ovarian cancer, Gellhorn swallowed a cyanide pill in her London flat. She had lived an incredible life and saw more of humanity at its best and worst than many of us ever will. She witnessed war and its impacts firsthand and put a human face on the people she reported on, be they soldiers or civilians. Her obituary in the New York Times was spot on when it described her as a cocky, raspy-voiced maverick who saw herself as a champion of ordinary people trapped in conflicts created by the rich and powerful.